Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this short one I'll talk a bit about Throne and Liberty as the game will be open for everyone. I'll give you a few tips and tricks and my early access experience with the game while I show you relevant gameplay footage. These are in no particular order by the way but the first one. The first one is very important and I want to make sure everyone watches at least this part. Servers in early access were a mess. I really hope they fix them or this will go like any other MMO launch in existence, poorly. And it was especially bad in early access considering they charge people money for it. Yeah, I know, I know. I only got in for these videos I'm about to dump on this channel, so yeah. So the servers melt and they will melt in a way you are not used to. <laughs> Let me explain. During early access on Sunday, I believe, I think I got booted out of the game 50 times minimum you'll see one of the guides i will got line up for you guys in an unedited footage that takes around five or six minutes i got kicked out two times and it's infuriating because the way i am used with melting server is to sit in a queue you know these servers let you back in <laughs> no problem only to leg out and kick you back out in a couple of minutes and it's very bad in dungeons because you lose some progress every time it happens and people leave the group, you have to queue again and so on. So be prepared, I won't spend more time talking about this. Now, graphics are pretty good, the game runs okay considering how it looks, but it doesn't mean the performance is great though. Performance is okay, but just okay. On my 4090, I got 40 to 60 FPS in busy areas. To be frank, that's a shitload of players, still. What I'm trying to say here is you will most likely need to have, uh, I don't know, separate video settings when you go do big scale activities like field bosses, PvP or even running around towns in the first week or something. The leveling experience is also okay. You can go pretty hard and level up in a couple of hours or just do a bit of everything and cap out in two to four days. There's too much running around for my taste, meaning you'll have to run from place to place like an idiot passing around messages for people that could just talk to each other if they would bother walking 200 meters, you know. Ah, and you're a mute, you're a silent protagonist. You're the chosen one, the hero. The story lost me from the beginning. I even forgot at what point I stopped giving a damn, but I got good news. The F spam works way better than in Lost Ark, for example. You can skip an entire dialogue in seconds. Now, the gameplay is great. I got a few gripes with the controls and the UI, but for most people, it should do the job just fine. Tab targeting is the name of the game. If you don't like that, well, you have an action control scheme you can use or try to use, and you can freely switch between both of these at any time, but I prefer tab targeting because a number of reasons the biggest one is how easy is to select what i want with my mouse while i still move around with wasd keys now compare that with cycling through five or more enemies with tab trying to get to your desired target not fun so yeah if you can get past this and work around some of the default in-game settings that make no sense and perhaps rebind some of the controls you can make it work beware though i got my keys reset during a hotfix so yeah <laughs> spend time changing them on your own risk now this being an asian mmo you should expect pretty high levels of polish from the world the mechanics animations and combat mostly the combat sprinkled with a bit of Pay to win, <laughs> here and there, and not much, but just enough, you know, just enough. The auction house and trade system being the biggest offenders, but if you're playing it pretty casually, it doesn't matter. If you're a min-maxer type of guy and you want to keep up with the whales, <laughs> good luck and i'm sorry for your loss and yeah i hope you have the money the skill ceiling is pretty high from what i saw and you need to do some research before you even go into the first dungeon at level 20 a guide for that one incoming tomorrow i believe there are one shot mechanics you need to know how to deal with i didn't engage in pvp so far as i'm still leveling up but again I, from what i saw in other streams and running around the world myself it looks fun, but it's chaotic. It gives me new world guild versus guild kind of vibes, you know, and that's good. I don't think you can take part in it, though, unless you are a sweaty player chasing the meta builds and using every advantage you can possibly get. It is like this with any competitive game. Don't get me wrong, you can still find a casual guild and do casual guild PvP, but you won't win any awards for sure. Now, guild boss farming, this will be kind of mandatory if you want to progress at a reasonable, reasonable pace. 
because I hear some of the gear is locked behind those bosses. So if you're after best in slot stuff at reasonable prices, you better join a good guild that sells or distributes that loot within the guild, not sell it on the auction house for profit. I don't have any patience for guilds and stuff at this point in my life. So I know for a fact I'm not the target audience for this game. I will still play it until I hit a plateau. So the till the of this point is if you are a lone wolf type of guy, this is not the game for you as it kind of forces you into a guild eventually. In this game, you can't go blind and just wing it. I mean, I did, but you'll waste too many materials, so even if you are not ultra competitive, you'll still get frustrated when you want to change your build. More on this in a bit. Now, during your progression, you will get white gear, then green, then blue, and finally purple. This being the highest tier at the moment. You get green gear by just leveling, and on the blue, you start having some more options already. Uh, you can do co-op dungeons, open world dungeons, or abyss dungeons, or you can complete the, uh, the lithograph book for the rewards. Now, purple gear. As you, you keep playing the game, you want to transition from blue gear to purple gear, obviously. And you can do that completing co-op dungeons and abyss dungeons and lithograph book. And additionally, you can do field and guild bosses. Or best in slot, purple items only drop from field and guild bosses. So yeah. Oh, and the uh, auction house boss. <laughs> First two, even three gear sets don't even matter, meaning you can pick whatever you want, but when you reach purple you should know what you want and make the best decisions or else you'll fall even more behind when you decide to swap some piece of gear, you know. Enhancement materials are not that easy to come by and you'll have all sorts of caps on your progression. I won't go into those caps, but this is how Asian developers do it. I don't really like these systems because it's bad when, when you have a couple of free days, but you reach certain caps in a couple of hours. So if you enjoy farming open world dungeons, for example, abyssal contract tokens are your limiting factor. Dimensional contract tokens are required if you want to do co-op dungeons and only 900 of those are are given to you every day. They are used to loot the chest at the end, by the way, so if you're out of tokens, tough luck. And there are more caps I won't get into. One last thing on the progression, test your weapon combos early on and I suggest you know what you want before you get too far with the leveling rewards. This is pretty much impossible to set on combos because they feel good only after you reach certain points, you know. And I got lucky, I was happy to find out I chose the go-to healer weapon combo for PvE. But yeah, you won't be able to change your build later on fast, because there are a lot of enhancing materials that go into your weapons, gear and skills. Yeah, you, you can even enhance your skills in this game. And one more thing, if you played Lost Ark for example, you know how this works. It's very hard to max out your character for free. And then an update drops, increasing the... Cap. So you can reach the old cap fast now and start working towards the next wall while devs put a, a lot of mini walls between you and that tall wall they just introduced. And so it goes on and on until you are bored or you rage quit. Or... But you will be pleased to know there is no failing system that I know of while enhancing your gear. There are for sure some degrees of randomness into the systems, but for the most part, if you got the gear and the enhancing materials, you can advance, no problem. And that's good. This is one of the reasons I keep rage quitting Black Desert Online, you know. One click and poof, seven days of work go to the dumpster. The auction house is a trading hub where players can post items and gear up for sale in exchange for Lucent. This is done so that free-to-play players have a way of getting Lucent, which is usually obtained by paying with real money in the special shop. Yeah, special shop, my ass. This is where the big guilds will sell best-in-slot gear for exorbitant amounts of money. I suspect gear will reach a couple of thousands early on and after a while when the market becomes saturated you might get a chance to buy one or two things if and only if you sold a piece here and there and got some lucent yourself as a free to play of course if you have the money you can buy day one whatever you want again i'm not this guy when i reach this point with my progression i believe i'll just stop playing as i'm not interested in the typical asian mmo treadmill at this point in my life. I'll make some guides about this game for sure, but I won't stick around for too long. I'm playing a healer, so stick around if you're interested in dungeon and PvP gameplay from a healer point of view. Anyway, thank you for watching. Watch some build guides before you start playing, so you don't waste too many materials for no reason, and enjoy the game. Most first weeks and months are great in a new MMORPG, so yeah.
Until next time, take care and see ya.